Hi, I'm Steve Miller, and it's midweek, and this is Future Speak. I've done this every single Wednesday for, well, a lot of years, and this is where we cover six different segments of the futures markets, 23 different futures contracts we're going to look at today. This is a special, this, this will always be in the member section, uh, and that website is moving along quickly, so we're going to be, be ready in just a couple of weeks to go live, excited about that. have a lot of things to look at today, and we are getting ready to do that right now. So uh, what we always do is start out with the energies and then move into foreign exchange, uh, then into the metals, treasury, stock index futures, and we have added the grain. So we have lots to look at here. We're gonna switch over to the charts, get right into energy and take a look at light crude. We have been looking at the potential for a couple of weeks still of risk on the downside. And uh, you'll be able to see on these charts that uh, we have been moving like almost nowhere. Uh, these big arcs on the bottom, those are cycle patterns. And uh, I've got also a uh, cycle pattern for gasoline overlaid on that also. And that is because that's one of the products. I'm going to take a closer look in here. And uh, you can see, look at these last eight weeks as we have just moved absolutely sideways. I know it seems like there's been a lot of chop in the oil market, but this has been around the area of 62 at the top and around the area of uh, 56, uh, 56 and a half on the bottom. So that's a relatively tight range when you look at oil here and how these things normally move. So pretty uh, tight movement in there. We are in the final period here of uh, this correction, uh, which has uh, turned out to be only uh, sideways. I mean, look at how it's moved in here. Now, when you get into corrective periods that are supposed to have downside moves and they don't move down, that says to you something about the overall trend. And the major trend seems to be not being able to push down in here very much. We've had some corrections in the products, but not really getting that in this uh, crude oil market in here. So uh, we're going to uh, take a look here at the daily, and you'll see what this looks like on the daily chart. This is the pattern that we were expecting. We thought that we were in a period of downside risk right in here. Well, it's just moved sideways. You can see all of that sideways move. Uh, and the pattern in here suggests, well, maybe a little bit more fooling around here. But then we get into a couple of weeks where there is downside risk. We've been going sideways. And that TTM squeeze, for those of you that look at that on the daily chart, that's been firing consistently in here. And, well, we're going to do uh, some segments on the TTM squeeze uh, in the Tools for Techs. Uh, memberships uh, segments pretty soon and you'll be able to learn about that uh, if you haven't followed it but uh, what that tells you is that you're extremely low volatility and that something big is likely to happen now the way this pattern lays out it lays out to some period in here of decline likely finishing up this correction and then another rally that could be the rally that moves you back up to the top of that range 62 to 64 in oil uh, ultimately, the upside uh, in oil looks like it could get all the way up to, well, the top of this resistance area where that is around 67, 67, 60 uh, by the time we get into the next serious rally. I'm not calling for that right now. I do expect to get some sort of a correction in here before we get a move to the downside. So uh, uh, before we get that move to the upside, sorry. So here it is, that tight uh, market uh, that we've seen in there. Now we're going to switch this over to the gasoline market, which was also due to have a bottom. And you can see the way this pattern has been shaping up uh, right in here, where it's been moving again, just sideways. This is the way the cycles lay out. You can see the dotted lines. I'm going to do a lot of cycle projections here uh, for people that uh, take the charting service, and you'll be able to see how the cycles project. That's really what we want to look for here is some projections. And again, like in oil, well, we're in this period of modest correction, it appears. But then this takes over, and you're likely to get another rally, and even through that area of resistance on that FIB confluence. So uh, we see gasoline there as not being able to correct very much. Heating oils had a bigger correction uh, than gasoline or 
um, than uh, the oil market as a whole. Take a look closer in here, and you can see it had that big rally up to the 50% uh, uh, resistance area, but then it's been moving in this, we'll call it more of a triangular formation. So you can see this right in here, and you can see this right in here, and that's where it remains, stuck in the triangle. Patterns in here suggest, again, that another in another week or so, uh, this is going to start to move on the upside. So we're going to expect another upside move in heating oil. What that all projects to, uh, as we, we look at these three particular markets, uh, in the energy sector is that it's likely that we're going to see only some maybe a week or so of some downside coming up here uh, at the most and then we get into another period of rally so we have used this period of correction uh, the uh, oil market energy markets not really being able to move much to the downside that makes a bullish case uh, coming up for the intermediate term so uh, no real break in there and uh, we're going to look for a better market. Uh, the next thing we're going to switch over to uh, is the natural gas chart. So uh, take a look. Uh, let me get this chart switched over here for you to natural gas and we'll uh, move that over right now. So there's the natural gas chart and we can see that uh, there was, I see these big lines down here. That says that there was a, an important bottom due in here. And uh, as a matter of fact, I want to uh, move this out to uh, a little longer period so you can see how that looks a little better. We're going to go out to a 10-year weekly, and you can see these major, major moves in here. Uh, and there you can see that big bottom that was due to form as the, the dominant cycle then started to move up. Uh, and we'll look even closer in here. And now we're just in this little green zone. Uh, there was a morning star formation in there. It says that we're likely to be moving on the upside. You can see we've hardly had a move on the upside yet. This is really just getting started in natural gas. Uh, and uh, it's giving signs of uh, some uh, bottoming in here. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, this pattern here. This is where the bottom is supposed to be. There's these little doji stars in here. And uh, we're going to look for a little upturn in here. Let's uh, move this out also to a little longer period at two years. And we'll see how these cycle patterns have shaped up. And uh, so you can see that there is a period here. We're going to take a look at, oh, the next, uh, let's move it in so you can see it a lot closer here. We'll take a look here all the way out for maybe the next several weeks. And you can see this choppy action that we're projecting in here based on the cycles. We should get another rally in here. Maybe it gets you up to 290 to 295, but then messing around again for probably a couple more weeks. That's how these cycle projections uh, pan out in here. And then that takes us out to, well, I can get this big pattern right over here to tell us somewhere out in July, about a month from now, is where the most bullish time comes for natural gas. So we're going to still look for this sideways choppy action here in natural gas. Uh, and then uh, moving to a, a better period after that. So now we're going to move out of the um, energy sector here and move into uh, foreign exchange. So we're going to start out with the dollar index, forward slash uh, DX. We'll get that to load up in here, and you will see uh, some big patterns we're going to look at here. I see these big, big on us, uh, patterns on the bottom, and when this one started to move up, this last one, you could see the major move we had on the upside. However, signs here are, have been bad that the big rally that we had has made a major top. And uh, let's just take a look at this period right in here. And now you can see this red zone. That red zone came because of a major breakdown. The breakdown under this 23-week level right in here, that sets it up to be in this kind of a pattern. See that? As this uh, upside uh, um, uh, channel that we had right in here became the downside channel that we have there. So this really could go on for a long period of time. Now, that said, um, we're in a period where we could get a little more rally in the dollar index, maybe a couple of weeks. And uh, when I switch this over to the daily chart, uh, you'll get a sense uh, for what I'm seeing in here. So we could see the red zone in here, and that says that intermediate term, the dollar looks weak to me. 
but we're in a period on the short term, and we'll zoom in right here, where we're, we might even have gotten an early bottom in here. So uh, that period in the uh, dollar that has started to move down in that kind of a trend that we saw on the weekly chart, you can see how the cycle patterns can continue to stair-step their way down in here uh, and even have rallies during that period. So this is about a two to three week rally in here that might have started already. Maybe it comes down and tests it, but then moves up. Uh, so the dollar is in a window of time that it could do a little bit better. Uh, and uh, of course, we've got this issue with Greece going on. So we don't really know for sure how that's gonna get resolved. They appear to be in the 13th hour right now. And uh, I know that uh, recently, uh, just in the last number of hours, Tipperus came out and said that uh, basically the finance ministers in Europe said no to the last proposal. So that, you know, uh, could keep a pressure on the euro. There's no pressure on it today as we look at it. But this shows uh, short term wise that we're likely to get a uh, period where the dollar is a little bit better, still in that big downtrend. Now, if I switch this over to the euro currency, I'm going to stay for a moment on the daily chart uh, so that you can uh, see this of uh, the uh, pattern in here. Uh, and let's take a look close in here. Uh, the euro currency, let's move it a little bit out. Now, we talked about the dollar being uh, strong um, for um, the next couple of weeks. Got this uh, same uh, thing in here where we have this tight range here in the euro. And we actually see that there's a potential for some kind of a decline in here, maybe over the next uh, several days, an attempted rally, and then further decline. That's really the way this shapes up. And this period right in here, where we expect the dollar to be stronger, we expect that this euro currency won't be able to make a lot of upside progress and then actually move to the downside while the dollar has its little bit of a bounce in there. So we'll take a look here at the weekly chart in the euro currency. We'll move over here. And uh, the period that we just looked at on the daily chart, that looks like it's got, we'll call it a few weeks of corrective period to go. Now, when we look just right in here at the euro currency, this week, you could see that bearish engulfing pattern right under this 34-week moving average, right at this point of resistance. Man, that's really, really smells that we're going to get a move down into this area here on the cycle. That's that period we just showed you on the dollar that is likely to get some rally. And then after that, we get another rally in here in the euro when the dollar resumes to the downside. So I'm trying to look at how all of these correlations work together here. And we saw a window of time for the dollar to be better. We see a window of time for the euro to not be so good. Uh, I'm going to move this uh, back over to the two-year weekly chart and switch over to these other currencies in here. Here is the British pound. Now, remember, we just said the euro currency likely to have a few weeks of weakness while the dollar has a bounce. This is how this British pound is shaping up. You could see down to this period where this cycle bottoms. This is pointing also to the British pound being weak for the next couple of weeks. Uh, when we look here at the Japanese yen, let's get rid of those marks right there. There's a similar occurrence. I uh, actually have the uh, timing spikes up here. And that's a, this period right in here is a risk of weakness. So all of this is lining up to a potential for um, a, a dollar, a period of dollar strength. Now we're going to call it minor while the bottoms are made or these declines come in these currencies. Uh, and then the dollar after that turning weak again. So that's the Japanese yen. We'll take a look here at the Aussie dollar. Uh, and uh, this, this has not been able to get much of a bounce. This is certainly related to um, the weakness that we've seen in precious metals uh, because of this currency's linking to the mining industry. So uh, not being able to get much of a bounce here. We really don't see a low here. Uh, or any real rally able to calm out until August based on this pattern. Canadian dollar, uh, really similar in here, uh, all goes all the way out till September before we see any real kind of a rally. You could see the 34 week moving average has really been holding these currencies. Uh, so those uh, currencies 
are, are not looking uh, all that strong when we uh, look at the, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, uh, because of their resource linkage. Uh, really expect to um, see, as I said, looking at here, that the dollar is in a period of bouncing, but not really a period of big strength. That's probably going to give us this window that we're looking at for the Euro, British pound, uh, Japanese yen to all have these pullbacks. And then uh, after we get past these few weeks, I think the dollar moves sharply lower again and those currencies do better. So this is just a period, a minor one, of some bouncing in the dollar and some correction in these other currencies that have had bounces. British pound had a huge bounce when you come to think about that. All right, so you know we're looking for this period of bounce for the dollar and some of these other currencies being weak. The way these correlations tend to work, if we think dollar uh, a little bit stronger for the near term, if we think the euro probably pulling back uh, for the next uh, two, three weeks, that lines up with gold silver having some risk over the next two, three weeks if those correlations hold up accordingly. And what we saw today, actually, when they revised the GDP, um, is that gold and silver had quick hits to the downside, but they uh, then uh, did recover uh, after that. So uh, what we want to do now is uh, look at uh, forward slash GC. We're going to switch over into the precious metals markets and uh, then uh, take a look uh, again, always starting with the weekly charts and then moving over to the daily chart. Gold has been stuck in this range, and there it is right there. You could see that yellow zone still in the range, not giving us any kind of a good sign uh, in here uh, about uh, this pattern. I'm going to move back out to the 10-year so you could see the big patterns in here. 10-year weekly, there are those big, big cyclical patterns. Let's look at just these last two and a half here. And you could see the alignments in here. And we're in this period where we should be getting a rally. We should have been getting a pretty good size uh, rally starting right in here. Well, that hasn't really resolved itself yet. It has been stuck in this range. Uh, we've gotten down to the point where um, the, these markets have been threatened with breakdowns, still not getting any kind of a breakdown in here. I really would not want to see this area under 1141 get broken, and over this 1232 would be a breakout on the upside. In the meantime, we cannot get that move at all and still stuck in this range, uh, pretty much near the middle of it right now. Come over here to the uh, daily chart in here and you could see look at these beautiful cycle rhythms that follow perfectly uh, if you see the um, cycle bracket on the bottom here you can just see the way it resolved in real time it's almost the perfect ideal cycle right in here this one left hand translation peaked early and then continued on the downside bearishly when it peaks early and breaks down that's bearish this one, uh, well, again, kind of middle range right in here. And this is really where it gets confusing, uh, where all of this period where this rally should have occurred, it's not getting the rally. And it says to me there's some weakness in here. I'm concerned about the way this pattern is shaping up. Now, I have this daily pattern set up for you to see. And I want you to see here, see this big cycle right in here? I want you to see the way the cycle crested right over here. And right over here, it crested earlier in this pattern. And that turned this lower. You can see this, how these ranges tell us about the direction. That sets up these shorter term patterns to say, okay, maybe we come down a little bit more here. We held this support at 1168 in gold. Then we get another kind of rally in here, but you can see where these resistances are in the way. And then it rolls over again. So this whole period uh, in here is uh, a concern to me when I look at it. And this period doesn't really end uh, until, let's see if we can get a highlight here to tell us uh, when that ends, like uh, the middle of July before we really get out of this period of uh, where this thing is stuck. Uh, and has more potential to move on the upside. So that is not a great looking pattern when we look at it. Uh, we're going to switch over to the weekly pattern in silver, uh, forward slash SI. You'll see the uh, same type of 
uh, cyclical patterns in here. We've got dotted lines in here to show you that. And the G uh, lines up to the gold bottoms. You can see how that lines up. And we've been in this period of rally, but again, not really able to get the rally going. It's a little bit clearer here than gold is. Where this bottom came in and this rally started, man, it better get away from this area or else there's going to be an issue. I don't want it. It's not a major breakdown, but it is a breakdown if you get down under the support area for some intermediate period. 1523 to 1542, that's that support range in there. And uh, it would be nice to see it move away from there. But again, when I look at the daily uh, chart, it's got this pattern in here that I don't really like. You can see the projection. Last week I warned about this bearish flag forming in here. I think I mentioned it two weeks in a row. And now you could see it broke down and see the dotted lines in here. That sets up this pattern and that sets us up for weakness to, well, July 17th. So we said July 18th on gold, July 17th on silver. That says we really can't get, based on these cyclical patterns, any real rally in this market uh, until we get uh, to uh, the middle of July based on these patterns. If it holds up, I hope there isn't any kind of a real breakdown based on that because I'm long gold and silver based on the major pattern. So I don't have huge positions in there yet based on these type of patterns not breaking out. If we got in gold over 1232, I would be increasing significantly. In the meantime, we're stuck in these patterns and I'm not going to take any big risk in there. Next thing we're looking at is platinum forward slash PL and you can see the big pattern in here also. This is really a negative occurrence right here where it had this breakdown and now we're at this bottoming area but no real sign of a bottom yet uh, as it continues to make lower lows but again in the bottoming area I'll call it the next couple weeks and that might help gold and silver get a little bit of a bounce out of here. Now copper forward slash HG this is a much better picture than we have seen in here before. Uh, I'm going to look right here at this weekly pattern. You can see the low do. You can just see these timing spikes right in here. So this is the period right here that the low is due. This cycle right here turning up right there. And I want you to see this weekly pattern. And that is a bullish piercing pattern that's forming in here. Uh, in the members section, uh, when we get started in the next couple of weeks, uh, the very, very first um, thing that it that you'll find in there will be uh, looking at 22 of the best uh, candlestick patterns uh, really defining them nicely and I think that will help you a lot so uh, this is a bullish piercing pattern comes right as these cycles are supposed to be bottoming so we like that when that happens here you can see that's happening on the daily right at support let's just look at these last couple cycles and look at the bullish morning star that forms here right on the support level so copper, copper looks really, really good there. And uh, I would say that copper is forming an important bottom. That is lining up with what we're seeing uh, in platinum as a point for at least a bounce in there. And uh, I would say that what that uh, suggests is that uh, maybe gold and silver do get a little bit of help from these other metals in here and they don't have any kind of significant breakdown during this period that really looks like there could be some pretty good weakness. All right, so I uh, want to remind you that our website is at uh, slim, uh, actually, actually the uh, email is slim at askslim.com if you have any questions for me. Uh, and our website coming soon page is www.askslim.com, that's S-L-I-M. And uh, where you can sign up there uh, in order to be notified of when our launch comes. Got a lot of things that are going to be in the membership section. Uh, also have a trader support membership level uh, where you'll be able to email me, ask me questions. Uh, and also uh, all of these charts that you're looking at, they're available also with all of these annotations on them and more as we develop more things on there. So you know, this will be a great tool for you to use. Uh, for your own analysis, getting all of these charts with the cycle analysis on them. There's about 330 stocks 
and uh, about 270 of them have pretty good cycle patterns on them. And then we do ETFs and indexes and futures uh, and do a lot of daily things on the futures uh, and ETFs also. So uh, great uh, product that I think that you're going to be able to have. And uh, please go to the website if you haven't yet and uh, sign up to be notified about the launch. Uh, that's free. Um, and uh, uh, also coming on Fridays will be the Ask Slim Market Week, a review of the last week, and then a look forward and other things in there also. So I think you're really, really going to like that. All right, so uh, enough promotion. We're going to move into the other half of this piece. We're going to look at Treasuries, Stock Index Futures, uh, and the Grain Market. So uh, let's uh, move over uh, into these other charts. Take a look first at what is a very, very interesting five-year chart on the five-year notes. Uh, and uh, we'll bring that up for you right now. Um, so let's take a look here at the, this left chart here. We're going to blow it up. This is the five-year. Now, it's got great um, cycle patterns in here. We're going to look only here at these last two and a half for you to see. And uh, we have a significant breakdown that occurred after this low right over here getting below those lows even though it bounced that was a bad thing so now if i just blow this out a little bit in here um, you'll be able to let me get a little bigger picture here you'll be able to see there are three arrows in here that are pointing down and that uh, what that signals that because this cycle made a lower low it says that this bracket right over here, you see that? It says that the cycle that bracket represents has turned down already. So the big pattern is turned down. The intermediate pattern, that's this one right over here, is turned down. Uh, it's in a minor bounce on this one right there. And when that minor bounce ends, you get a big picture right in here, you'll have all three of them moving down together and when all three of them move down together you get some big decline so here we see that this is a potential to hold up through july we're in this bouncing area right in here we could get a lot of zigzag but then after that likely uh, uh through july after that august time for some more big downside now here is the daily patterns and look at the beautiful alignment on these patterns in here as you can see these cycles this is how they really traded so on the bottom are ideal cycle patterns these are the way they really traded and now notice the stair step downward motion on these cycles right in here probably not going to make a new high and then now turning down over here really cool isn't that well that tells you that the near-term interest rates are going up and they are getting ahead of the federal reserve here who is falling behind the curve pretty significantly so that is a look at the five year five year in bad shape uh overall just minor bounces and uh maybe okay through the july months but then after that uh, looking to me pretty weak. So we're going to switch over now to the 10-year, and we'll blow this one up, and it's, well, pretty much the identical pattern uh, in here as we had the major breakdown. I've got the cycles labeled for you in here where you could see this is the, really the major count that we look at here, 25 weeks, 28 weeks, 24 weeks. This is spooky, isn't it? 24 weeks rally early breakdown right in here and now goes down for well all of this time period this one actually has broken down also and when this one aligns on the downside you've got three moving on the downside just like we showed you on the five year we have we're probably okay out through the july months but then after that, moving down sharply again. So lots of risk here in this market. Really do not like uh, these markets at all. Bounces will probably be, just be temporary. Now, last week we talked about that it was likely we were going to get some downside based on this pattern right in here. Well, you could see that came. Uh, we got a little more rally than we thought there, but you could see it stopped right in resistance and then turn down so this has got a few more days in here then it turns up and then down again so that's the way we use these shorter term patterns to project and uh, maybe we could get a rally in the 10 year uh, in the next week or so up to about 126 uh, let's call it 10 to 15 probably not much better than that a point on the upside but then turning down again 
in this choppy period that we're looking at now. We're going to look over at the 30-year bond. We'll just look at the daily chart, and you'll see the same pattern as it's shaped up in here. This is the small pattern, these dotted lines. As you see, this cycle pattern we're highlighting there. There's that bounce we're expecting. Maybe it gets you up to, we'll call it, 151.22, that would be a couple of point bounce potential in the next couple of weeks, but then down again. So basically what we're looking at in these currencies uh, is, uh, well, a very, very weak market, um, really in just a little window here of a potential bounce, major pattern pointing down, intermediate pattern getting a bit of a bounce, maybe it's got a few weeks through July, but then after that, August, September, really look like a bad period uh, for the bond market. Of course, we'll be looking at the potential for the FOMC, who is way behind the curve, maybe getting more aggressive. Uh, they start to get some better economic numbers, uh, and they did upgrade GDP today, uh, then it's likely that we're going to see um, uh, some uh, quicker action by the Fed, because they're way behind, they're under a lot of scrutiny, and uh, I think that they're going to want to catch up. Bond market knows that, and that's why this intermediate longer term patterns are so ugly uh, and we're going to look for uh, pretty high, pretty much higher significant interest rates out into the fall period and even later than that so just in a minor bouncing period right now uh, for the uh, treasury market next thing we're going to uh, do is look at the stock index features uh, I'm going to look at the S&P 500. You know when I look at this um, everything says to me that we're in a period of continued sideways chop where we edge out um, new uh, highs by a little bit. I actually don't see much in here that says to me anything other than when these little corrective periods end, there's going to be a risk of an upside spike to complete this pattern. Uh, I'm going to show you the weekly pattern in the S&P 500 uh, first. Uh, where it looks like uh, here's that big, big pattern you can see on the bottom. Uh, and uh, again, this bottom in here is a shift from where I had the major bottom before. When I do my big picture analysis for members, uh, there will be, uh, I'll show you the big shift that I saw in here and really a correction in my analysis. Uh, why I think that there's uh, likely to be a this rally that we're in to get you uh, a new high by some significant number before this is over with um, and uh, then after that turning down here out into the fall time is where I think the big risk is but I think that they're going to try one more pretty good rally now we're going to see this area up here this is uh, 2186 that is a Fibonacci extension number. I'm going to switch over to the daily and show you where that uh, lines up. This is, uh, we've been holding this area of support as a Fib support here, 34 week moving average right in here. This uptrend uh, right here, we held that pretty cool and then moved back up to the top of the range. I actually think we're like only two weeks into this rally off of this low that says that there is more time here on the upside. Uh, when I look, switch this over to the daily chart, uh, this is the way this shapes up. We see this consistent cyclical pattern that's been running between 10 and 12. Now, I actually got, uh, got fooled in here because this downturn, was so significant, but it didn't break down, that I thought it was going to give us more down in there. But once it blew above this area, it changes the whole shape. So this is a ninth day high. Remember, we're running a 10 to 12 period. So 9, 10, we're in day 11 here, day 12, maybe right here. That's this. And then after that, we get ready to move up again. And uh, that's why I think there's a potential for that uh, uh, upside strength to come next week. A little bit of risk here these next couple days. Next week, better. Here's what I see. S&P headed up to the 2156 to 76 area in, we'll call it the next month. After this, that is the big area of resistance. I still think they're going to chop their way and maybe we'll get a couple of spike days as a blowout on the upside. Uh, and uh, this uh, long, long period of chop that we have been in, 
I think that uh, we're going to stay in it, except for one period where I think that they blow out on the upside and hook everybody uh, out into the summer. Of course, summer just started, so uh, we'll call it some period of four to eight weeks from now, uh, that high uh, made and that being a very, very significant high. So choppiness is to continue, risk that we move sharply to the upside at one point in here, and again, 2156 to 76 is the zone that I'm looking for on the upside in the S&P 500. Um, the NASDAQ, uh, I'm going to switch us back over to the weekly, uh, it's, it's a little weaker uh, than the broad market and has a little bit different pattern that we're looking at in here uh, and that is this looks a little incomplete to me uh, being that this is only a nine week low right there and so we're looking for uh, maybe a little bit more of a struggle from the NASDAQ in here as this looks incomplete. I would rather buy the S&P 500. However, the big winner, the absolute monster in here that's completely strong. And I'm going to tell you, I think that there has been a fake out here in the what the PEs have been uh, is the Russell because uh, there has been, uh, I think, an anomaly based on some stock, some stocks that have had losses, uh, and now those are kind of falling out of here. While the PE was, you know, like in the 80s, it's now projected to only be 19 uh, forward PE, and I think that they re have really caught on to that. And you could see these last nine weeks here, while the Nasdaq has gone sideways, we have new highs going on in the Russell. Russell clearly. The absolute strongest index in here and I think it's going to remain that way so I think uh, on this dip that we have right now I think you could buy uh, Russell I think you could buy uh, S&P and I think we're going to have a stronger week next week the way these things align right now anything can happen to change that especially if there's some panic based on Greece uh, and the patterns of course could always change I'm just reading the data as I see it right now and the data suggests to me looking at these markets uh, that we are going to have uh, only a minor period of weakness, uh, we'll call it the next few days, and then after that getting ready to move back on the upside again. So uh, I have to go by the weight of the evidence, and the weight of the evidence for the stock market remains bullish. Uh, when I look at the Slim market condition indicators, uh, those have improved again and uh, remain with the Russell being blowout uh, strength uh, compared to the, the rest of them. So that's a, a look at the stock index features, which I think will resolve themselves with a blowout on the upside uh, that might last uh, days or weeks, and that would be the end of it. We're going to switch over now to the grain markets, added uh, the grains to the markets uh, back uh, a few weeks ago because I had a lot of people asking me to do that. Now that I have more time to do it, I'm not confined by the past show, like uh, in the past shows that I've done. Uh, I will uh, bring those every single week also. We expected uh, to get a um, pretty good uh, bottoming in these grains, and they actually do look like they're bottoming. Some of them have been a little bit sluggish, but uh, they look okay to me. Here's the corn pattern. Uh, the, this is in the period that we expected the bottoming to come, and uh, that's this window of time right here. And that uh, is right in here, and we're getting this bottom that looks like it's forming. Look at corn this week, and look at this pattern, a perfect morning star uh, that uh, has this doji star right in the middle. Uh, and uh, again, you'll want to look at the um, uh, Tools for Techs, our first one in the member section. Uh, and uh, you'll really get a good sense for candlestick patterns. This is a nice bottoming pattern that we have uh, going on in there. Uh, let's bring this back into two-year weekly, and we'll switch over now uh, from corn to wheat, uh, forward slash six, uh, uh, forward slash ZW. And uh, here's that bottoming period also. Four weeks ago, bullish engulfing. You had that little bit of a pullback, but then you're moving up again. That's a bullish pattern when you get that. And you know you could see this is a, uh, a belt hold pattern, that's called. There's a shaven bottom, shaven top right in here. And uh, that's a monstrously strong bar. I won't be surprised to see more upside there in the grains. Take a look here at the soybean market. Here you could see the bottom that we saw forming in there in soybeans. 
uh, and that's right on time that's that green zone that it's forming in now it really to change into a very bullish pattern it needs to surpass this cycle peak right in here see this cycle uh, that's this right there if it gets above it it changes the major trend and says that this is pushing up strongly so you need to get above that level to really have a breakout that's uh, right over here above 139 let's call 1039 let's call it we're trading right now at 989 so it's got a ways to go uh, before we really call that bullish and uh, the next thing we will look at is oats forward slash zo and uh, this one looking like it bottomed on time also uh, and uh, in right in this timing spike area right there and then moving to the upside so uh, those are actually looking we'll call them pretty good uh, as uh, we look now at uh, so many different things here 23 different uh, uh, contracts in the futures market and uh, also um, six different categories there's been a lot in here uh, again uh, I hope that this was valuable to you uh, what I want you to do is to uh, send me an email, slim at aslim.com, uh, as uh, we look at uh, opening up this website pretty soon. So any questions you have about that, uh, I'm starting to discuss memberships also. So if you want to write me about that, uh, looking forward to talking to you. Go to uh, www.aslim.com, go to the Coming Soon page, and uh, then uh, you will be able to sign up and be notified uh, for the launch that's just a notification uh, once we get up then the uh, memberships will be available after that so that's it for today uh, and I will see you soon